Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, and in this series called Acts of the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the first few chapters of the foundation of the book of Acts and what really set up the Acts of the Apostles or really the birthing of the church. In this episode, episode four, I want to talk about the power of your waiting because your waiting causes you to become weighty in the Lord. The longer you wait, the more you marinate or bask in the goodness of the glory of God. And the longer you wait, the more weighty you become with pounds, with ounces, with kilograms, with whatever measurement you have to measure weight. God wants you to be a heavyweight, not a lightweight. God wants you to be a super heavyweight, not a super welterweight. He wants you to be a heavyweight in the power and the glory of God. But in order to become a heavyweight, you need to stretch and increase your capacity. Many people are not able to do great things for the Lord because their capacity has not yet been stretched. You have not yet been groaned and groomed, nor have you been tested in those areas for your capacity to grow. So today I want to talk about the power of waiting because I believe it is the waiting that separates the sheep from the goat, the false from the true, the wheat from the tear, the true on fire believers from the lukewarm. So again, we're going to go over to Acts chapter 1 here. And I love this passage, Acts 1, 4. And while staying with them, Jesus ordered them to not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. That is a key word. Wait for the promise of the Father. You see, there's power in your waiting. And there's power in the tearing. There's power in the pushing. And there's power in in the trust. It really is a trust factor. You see, Jesus commanded the Israelites, wait. And in fact, the scholars say, according to the book of Corinthians, that when Jesus said that, when he released the prophecy, the promise, the reminder, there was actually 500 people. So many scholars say that when they went into the upper room in Acts chapter 2, when they went to the upper room, there was a 10-day process. Some would say 10 days. For 10 days, they began to pray and wait in the upper room before it became a birthing room. Because every upper room of prayer becomes a birthing room of glory. But in order for the baby to be birthed, many times you have to wait. How long have you been waiting for this baby to come? All right, on earth, it takes usually nine months for a baby to be born. Uh, nine months from incubation to full pregnancy to birth. There's three trimesters, right? And you cannot skip the process. Sometimes babies will come prematurely or they'll come a little later uh, than the arrival estimated date. However, it takes nine months for a baby to come. And how long are you willing to wait? You see, you cannot rush the process of growth, of maturity. You cannot rush the process. And the power is in the waiting. Are you willing to die to self? Are you willing to carry your cross? Are you willing to tarry, to trust in the Lord and to leave and separate yourself from soulish, carnal people? And are you willing to fully be yielded to the cross so that you can gain what God has for you? You see, it takes God to get what God wants to give you. We need greater faith. And that's what this waiting does. Some people want it now. Some people are immature children. Uh, I imagine like a child that's screaming at the parents saying, I want the lollipop. I want the toy now, 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 and begins to throw a tantrum in a public setting. God wants you to be a child of God where you are trusting in daddy where you are loving him and you believe in confidence who he is and what he said, that no matter how long you wait, you will wait. No matter how long it takes, you'll be there. No matter how long, how much you have to give, how many hours you need to pray, you will do it. 
like Mary said, according to your word, let it be unto me. I will do whatever you say. Whatever the man, the woman of God, the prophet says to do it, just do it. And watch what happens. Can you wait? It's the waiting that sifts the true friends of God. You see, many people come to me and say, Pastor Ben, I want to be your friend. Or Pastor Ben, how can I serve? Pastor Ben, how can I be more connected with you and your ministry? And a lot of people think that they can have access to me or come into my inner circle or they can just be given a position. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen, Felicia. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen, Jezebel. I'm sorry. I'm going to wait and test you with the test of time. And with the little things, your heart reactions, your heart responses, are you responding with offense? Are you responding by reacting in the flesh? Are you saying things? Are you doing things? Are you being committed and faithful in the little? You see, it's that waiting process that vets out who's actually with you and for you or who has a personal agenda. There's power in the waiting because those who wait and stick it through will receive the fullness. Like I said earlier, many scholars believe that there were 500 people that started praying in the upper room. My goodness. Oh, Rebbe Kerebraska. There was 500 people that started. But over a 10-day process, there was only left 120. Let me tell you, church, sometimes less is more. Sometimes in order for the increase, you need to decrease. Sometimes before God blesses you with a mega, mega harvest, he begins to shrink down your numbers like Gideon's army. Gideon wanted to choose 30,000 skilled, valiant warriors. But God said, no, I'm going to shrink it down to 300. I believe the Lord wants to shift and sift and shake because there is a remnant that's ready. I would rather have a group of on fire believers than be filled with a mega church of a lukewarm, cold believers. I'd rather be ministering to 30 on fire people than to 3,000 people that are lukewarm nominal with a 30 minute sermon, the hour of power in and out. No, I would rather be in a move of God, a move of the Holy Ghost for hours at a time than for a little sermonette. That is the separation of waiting. Our church services, even on a Sunday, are about five, six hours long every Sunday. When we're in revival and we host conferences, our services are literally five, six hours every day. And can people stand those services, meaning can they be in those services and be fully attentive and receive in those services? Some people cannot because it's too long. It takes too long. It's too long. I got things to do. Then you're going to miss out on your blessing because we need to learn the power and the value of waiting. The more time you give to the Lord, the more time we'll give back to you. That's how you move in time miracles. That's how you move in translation. That's how you move in the realm of God redeeming the times. Or making the most of every opportunity. Every year that the locusts have eaten, God will pay you back. That's how you live and move in that realm, in that window of time redemption. Or time multiplication. It's by giving your time to God. Let me tell you, any time that's spent with the Lord will never be wasted. One minute, one moment that's spent reading God's word, that is spent praying, that is spent serving at the local church, serving in the ministry, it is not a waste. Any moment spent with God is never wasted, but it will be returned back to you a hundredfold. I'd rather be where the presence is than be where there's money, finance. I'd rather sit, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God 
Hallelujah. Then sit and dwell with sinners and mockers. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in God's house. I'd rather have a little with peace than have much with aggravation. It's the power of waiting. And too many of us are not willing to wait, so we sell our soul for a bowl of soup. What happened with Cain and Abel? Oh, the twin brothers. Oh, Cain and Abel, Shatarabba. What happened? One of them was famished. And the brother Cain said, Hey, if I give you a bowl of soup, then will you give me your birthright? And that's exactly what happened. There was a trade. Hold dear and precious the birthright that God has given you. Stop selling your oil. Stop selling your oil cheaply. Stop giving away your mantle. Stop giving away your time. Stop giving away everything that you have for measly cents, pearls of a dollar. It's the power of waiting. Whew. From day one, there was 500 ecstatic people. But as day two came by, day three, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, what time is it? Oh, did you hear that? That's my stomach growling. Day four. Oh, Jesus, he's not real. Oh, he lied to us. Oh, he was just joking when he said that. Are you for real? Day five, day six, the numbers begin to slim and thin. The numbers begin to lessen and lessen. Because God says, in order for this baptism, in order for the power, in order for the blessing, the new level, in order for the next season to come, there needs to be the right exact number. Not everybody around you is actually for you. Not everybody around you is actually able to carry the weight of the blessing. Not everybody around you who praises you is actually for you. For you. In fact, they just want to kill you. They just want to be like you. They just want to take from you. And God says, be aware of your inner circle. Be aware of your space. Be aware of those who surround you. Because there is such a thing as water weight. There is such a thing as excess. And God is trimming the fat. God is trimming the excess. God is trimming the extra in this spring season. In this Passover Pesach season. God is saying, I want you to trim down your inner circle. I'm going to remove some people, remove some things, remove some toxic habits and some toxic people. I'm going to remove some stinking thinking because from day one to day two to day three to day three to day four, oh, I'm going to test who are the real worshipers and who are the warriors. Who are the worshipers and who are those that worry? Are you a warrior or a worrier? Who are the people who will truly go deep and go deeper with me? Who are the people that will go all in with me, says God? Oh, no matter how long it takes, no matter how long I need to wait, no matter what I need to do. If Jesus said stay, I'm going to stay and I'm going to wait. It's the power of waiting. Hallelujah. Because you don't just wait. And do nothing. You wait getting drunk of the Holy Ghost. You wait while worshiping. You wait while yielding yourself to God. Oh, though it tarries, it will not tarry any longer. Wait upon the Lord. Press in. Come on, tarry. Press in. Push yourself into that place. Because not many will make the window. Not many will make the opportune time. God wants to release the promise. God wants to release the blessing. But can he trust you? How can he trust you? By how you reveal your heart in the waiting, in the wilderness. When are you going to show up? If God said he'll do it, stay in Jerusalem and wait until you receive the promise of the Father. The Bible says, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a mighty sound like a rushing wind. When it arrived, there was only about 120 people, from 500 to 120. The 10-day process. Where are you today? Where are you now? Are you tired of waiting? Are the people around you tired of pushing, pressing? Are they tired of the war? Are they tired of the battle? You just want to take a back seat and be a nominal Christian? Or do you want to take a front seat? 
and be in the game and have your hands on deck and be all in. Give me revival or I die. Give me revival or I bust. Give me Jesus. I believe there's power in the waiting. For those of you, you felt like you've been waiting for a long time. There is a right attitude of waiting, of course. But I believe God wants to strengthen you. God wants to encourage you. God wants to bless you. The breakthrough's coming. Jesus is coming. The glory is coming. Miracles are coming. Things are coming to pass. This is a season for prayers and prophecies to be fulfilled and to come to pass. The desires of your heart will be met, will be fulfilled. Get ready for trees of life all around you. How long have you been waiting? Have you lost some friends while you're waiting? Have you lost some things, some people while you're waiting? But he is worth it and i'm gonna wait on you i'm gonna wait on you if not for your goodness if not for your mercy i'm gonna wait on you those who wait upon the lord you'll be mounted up on wings like eagles are you ready for pentecost to arrive if you if you're waiting for Pentecost, get ready to pay a cost. Every Pentecost has a price to pay. Is it worth it? Well, the waiting will shift and sift those who are for it or those who say that they're actually secretly against it. I pray now that God will strengthen you. God will bless you in this waiting season and this waiting process. You're not late. You're not behind. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Stay the course and may you be a part of that divine appointed number of 120. May you be a part of the people who remain. Jesus says when the Son of Man returns on the earth will he find faith. Will the Son of Man find faith on the earth when he returns? I pray that he will find you faithful. May we be faithful before Jesus. May we not be offended at the Lord. May we not be offended at Jesus. May we not lose heart. The Bible says that those who endure to the end will be saved. Don't lose faith. Hold on to the word of God. If God said it, he'll do it. Oh, Rebbe Karad, I know people say you're foolish, you're stupid. They mock you, they haunt you, taunt you, make fun of you. Hold on to his word. And don't sell it for a bowl of soup. I'm gonna wait on you. It's the power of your waiting. Depression is broken. The yoke of heaviness, despair is destroyed. I break it off and I release you. Thank you, Lord, for fire of the Holy Ghost. People of God, there is a power that comes when you wait. God stretches you, emboldens you, grows your capacity. The waiting will be worth it. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here with this episode on the power of waiting. I feel the weighty presence of God, Jesus. I feel so undone by the Lord right now. And I pray that in this series, the acts of the Holy Spirit, in this season of your life, you will see every promise that's yea and amen come to pass in your life. God bless you. See you soon.